welcome back to the channel it's another cold one today out here but in this video we're gonna be getting into this truck right behind me is a 1982 f-150 in the last video we fixed the fuel system in this truck we replaced the carburetor and the fuel tank and a few other items uh, at least got it running but now we got to get to that oil leak that's uh, coming from I believe the oil pan or uh, the rear main seal and um, we're gonna get into the whole drivetrain we're gonna replace the clutch we're gonna replace the flywheel maybe a few other things while we're down there let's get into it they, they did something here they put some sort of gasket uh, seal here to try to prevent some leaking uh, but they didn't resolve the issue it's probably an issue up farther in maybe around the uh, oil pan gasket. And from my best understanding, an oil leak that comes right here from the oil pan and the clutch cover, I believe it is the rear main seal. Rear meaning the rear part of the engine. Main meaning because, uh, you know, it's the main seal, right? The main one. We gotta take this all the way down here off, which means we gotta take the transmission off we got to take, take the clutch off, the flywheel off. Yeah, it's a lot of work. You know, maybe we'll take a look at the clutch while we do it. Maybe we'll drop the oil pan at the same time, place the gasket around it, just do some general maintenance. But uh, I think the first thing we need to do is take off the starter. So let's get busy. I've already drained the oil. Let's go ahead and drain the transmission fluid. All right, let's start to make some room down here by removing a few things. All right, I'm removing the rear drive shaft. There we go. Just need a little bit of co coaxing. Now I'm taking the front drive shaft out. Let's see if we can get this crossbar out. I think it's three quarter inch bolts. There we go. That comes off pretty easily. That'll work. Blue's getting a little old here. Let's just use it up.
All right, let's take this starter off. I think it's only two bolts. Oh, there we go. How's it look in there? I can't see. You tell me. I guess we'll find out in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Come on, almost there. Yeah. Woo, yeah. I didn't have to take this off after all. All right. All righty. All right, I'm hoping all we have is these four bolts to loosen. Actually, I've already loosened them. Just need to pull them out. And then I will see if I can slide the trans on back. We'll see how easy this comes out. Coming. All right, look at that. That should give me plenty of room, and I can pull this back even farther and drop it down a little bit, pull it back. There's a bunch of oil in here that, whoo! Oh yeah, look at that. Ah, lovely. These are the paper towels that came with the truck. They're probably like 20 years old. Hey, they still work pretty well. Six more bolts for this clutch pressure plate here. Let's get this off. Right here. So there's your plate on the back. Oh man, what is that? Yeah, looks like a little dirt dauber nest in there. All right. All right, but what we need to do now is use this pilot bearing puller to pull out this bearing. Tighten this down so it expands a little bit. And gets gets those teeth or get those gets those clips behind the bearing all right and then we're going to use this slide hammer and yank this thing out that may have just pulled the middle part out there we go that's it that's it. All right, here we go. I think we found our problem. Well, let's look at this flywheel real quick. I don't know if you can see, but there are a few cracks in this flywheel here. Just some hairline cracks. There's also some chipped teeth right here. Not completely chipped, but uh, you know, about a quarter of the way through. So thinking about just replacing that as well. We'll get a clutch, we'll get a flywheel. All right, we didn't remove all of this pilot bearing here. There's, um, there's a couple of notches on this side and on the opposite side in order to be able to fit this tool in there I need to get these little little feet around the notches there uh, that's getting in there I think that's pretty good alright so let me get the slide hammer and see if we can pull this out there we go All right, so you can really see 
right there on the right side of that crankshaft seal is pushed inward. Uh, that is probably where most of the oil is coming out. I think we probably should replace this oil pan while we're down here. Let's go ahead and clean up the bottom surface of that, get a new gasket. We'll probably have to take it off anyway in order to seal this properly. All right, well, next thing, let's drop this oil pan. This whole thing was just jerry-rigged together. I'm surprised it wasn't just leaking all over the place. All right, let's take this oil pan off. I pulled out the dipstick. I had to use needle nose pliers to get that off. Not a very good design. All right, I think we gotta jack this engine up in order to take this oil pan out. So let's see if we can loosen this bolt here or take this bolt out and then one on the other side. Maybe those are the only two engine mounts that I can see right now. I mean, I just gotta get it up a couple inches on either side, I think, and I can block it off. But I don't know if this is gonna work or not. But this is looking a little bit sketchy. Yeah, see, this is about to buckle here and kick out, but I mean, if I got a uh, half inch or quarter inch, I could just inch it up a little bit at a time and then do the same on the other side and just keep putting shims in there. Okay. Okay, I think we need to try the other side now. We'll just keep doing that back and forth till we get enough clearance. Actually, we're not getting any clearance because we've basically just tilted the engine. I think I've used all of my scrap wood arsenal for this project. But we're getting there. No. no. Alright, we're moving on to plan B. I don't know why I didn't think about this sooner. All right, I got it rested on one block there. What I should have done is just hoisted this way up or put this forklift up higher and then use a hand hoist just to uh, ratchet it up. Trying to do that with the bucket made this really difficult. All right, well, I did to get the oil pan off, but I actually spilled it when I kicked it. I kicked it underneath, so let me clean this up. Now I need to order some supplies, um, and get some gaskets in, uh, get a new clutch in, um, and what else do I need to get? Probably need to buy a flywheel. Right. Oh. These go in the oil pan bag. Motor mount bag. Clutch bag. Bell housing. Okay. Alright, let's go ahead and clean up this oil pan surface. This is not a gasket. I believe it's just, uh, this is just residue left over from RTV it looks like. Hopefully it'll come off pretty easily. I don't think it's a gasket. Maybe there is an old gasket on, on here. All right, this did not come out when the pan came out on this side. There we go. All right, so I think I might have to reuse this oil pan as much as I do not want to. The new one that just came in does not have a dipstick slot in it. I did pull up the um, the numbers on the bottom of my engine, and it does now look like a 1972 302. I have a 1982 truck, um, and it came with a 4.9 engine, so they replaced it with a 1972 302 engine, which I don't even think I can get an oil pan for that year. So uh, I'm probably gonna reuse this. 
see if I can fit the new gasket on here. This is where the problem came from. You can see that, I mean, I haven't even touched it. Look, look, there's oil gonna leak all through this here. So they, uh, looks like they tried to silicon or RTV this old gasket in place. Um, not very well, obviously. So let's clean this up and uh, see if it's even reusable. All right, so I'm cleaning my oil pan here and there's a bee. Here he goes. It's going up into his oil. It looks like a honeybee. Let me let him land here. Looks like a honeybee. But I, I don't think it is, right? He's going to back out in a second. It's funny how he backs out. Here we go. And he's going to go outside. I don't know. Continue making his nest or whatever. Get some more mud out there. Does anybody know what? Oh, here he is again. That was quick. What type of bee is this? All right. It's quick. I took this out off camera because it was leaking and it rusted through. Um, these are just drainage or, or caps for the coolant that goes around the engine. I forgot the official name of them, but uh, that's the only one I'm replacing because that's the only one that was leaking. All right, so check this out. This truck should come with a 4.9 liter engine in line six. This is not an inline six. We got eight cylinders, four on this side, four on that side. This is a 302 engine from 1972. I can tell that by the markings on the block. This is the 1982 truck, 1972 302 engine. However, this oil pan is made in 1979, comes off a 351 engine. And so the bolt holes don't exactly line up to a 302 engine. And the gasket's different. Let me show you. So here's the gasket for that fits this oil pan. And from here to here, I believe it's about two and three eighths inches. From here to here, it's about two and a quarter inches. Now, the 302 engine doesn't have the crankshaft that is larger. It has the two and a quarter on both ends. Also, look at these bolt holes. Somebody drilled extra bolt holes here and here to fit this oil pan to the 302. Now, this gasket won't line up to those bolt holes. It fits the old bolt holes. So what I'm gonna have to do is, because I need this dipstick. There is no place on the engine to take a dipstick on that 302 engine that I have, which is why I think they put this oil pan on here because there's no place to go, no place for a dipstick. So what I'm going to have to use is these extra gadgets, gadgets. I'm going to have to use this extra gasket to put up under the engine and then somehow seal it to this end. Otherwise there'll be a gap here. And that's where the leak was coming from earlier. So it's gonna have to somehow fit like that. That might work. I'll put a bunch of gasket goo on there. Or I might just fill it up with this ultra black gasket maker, which I'm gonna do anyway in the corners here. It's gonna be a little sketch, but I have done so much research and cannot find an oil pan that fits my engine that has a dipstick in it. So, Maybe one of y'all out there can leave a comment, tell me what I'm supposed to do on a 302 engine, where the dipstick's supposed to go, because uh, some people say it goes through the, um, the timing chain area, no place that I can find. There's nothing on the side of the engine that I can find, so I'm just gonna reuse this oil pan and make it work. All right, let's jack this engine back up and get the oil pan on.
uh, leftover piece of gasket. We're going to use this in the corners and on the outside. Uh, and maybe that would be better too. Just, I don't know, just putting ultra black everywhere. So hopefully you could see that with the sun coming through there. I, I don't know. Um, in any, any case, we're gonna let this sit for about an hour and then I'll come back and torque these down a little bit. All right, it's been about an hour. I'm gonna start cranking these down, starting from the middle, move my way out. All right, I think we're finished putting all the bolts up here. I made these extra long if you're wondering uh, because uh, I couldn't get the uh, nut around them when they were short. Um, as you can see, this gasket is protruding out a little bit right here. I don't like that at all. This is going to be the weak spot. If any oil is going to leak, it's going to leak right around there. All right, but I'm going to leave it like that and uh, let's put put everything back together. Well, that was much easier. I should have done that the first time. Just take off this hood and attach it to a strap do it nice and slow you won't break anything you can have a controlled raise a controlled lower all right guys we are ready to put this back together the whole drivetrain back together what i have here on my lap is the new flywheel nice and shiny um we need to fill in a little bit of goo in there so let's get a little gasket material in there i'm hoping that's not our weak point there so let's get some gasket goo in there Okay, we got our pilot bearing that came with the clutch kit. That's it. It came pre-greased. Uh, I think we're good to go. I might grease it up a little bit more, but... Uh, it is not light. Uh, there we go. Just gotta rotate it a little bit. Make sure all the holes line up. In order to keep this flywheel from spinning, just put a little wrench in here with one of your extra bolts and lock it in place like so. There we go. All right. All right, step number next is get the clutch installed. So I've got the clutch here ready to go. Let's clean these plates off first real quick and then we'll install them. A little bit of brake cleaner will do the job. We don't want the clutch slipping. All right, you take this little uh, key, it's just like a tool for installing this, I believe. Then you take your clutch up here and just slide it over. Wait, maybe I did that the wrong way. Is that right? Yeah, put that in there, sit that in there. That kind of holds it in place. You know, does this matter where it goes? I don't think. As long as we line up the holes, I think we should be fine. So let's turn this, line up a hole, try to get one in here. All right, I'm keeping this nice and vertical uh, so we can line up the transmission just like that. All right, I've got the new bearing on here. I'm gonna put a little extra grease around here. This came with it. Let's see if we can get this transmission put back in.
These are my bolts for the bell housing. I picked up these two long ones to uh, help me get the uh, transmission back on. So let's see if I can. Oh, oh. What is this? Wind is going crazy. Oh, God. Ah, it just blew all of this stuff off here. Okay. Sheesh. Whoa. Okay, so what is up with the wind in Nashville this year? It's crazy. All right, so anyway, uh, back to the uh, what I was saying. These guys, let's see if we can get this transmission back on with the help of these bolts. What you doing, bro? Bro. Got him. These dirt dabbers, you know. They will make all kinds of holes in the shed up here. All right, let's see if we can get this guide bolt through one of these holes here to help line up this trans. Come on, let's see if I can get one more. And then I can maybe slide this transy on in here. And these are 7 16 bolts. You can't get these at Home Depot or at Lowe. No, I'm just gonna leave these in temporarily for my guide bolts. All right, let's get this pushed on in here. Okay. I think that's close. Oh, it's in, I felt it go. Yeah, let's go. That's beautiful, okay. Let's get uh, some real bolts in here now. Tidier on up and, whoo, hard part is done. Okay, I got all the bell housing bolts on. It was actually easier to come through the cab here and uh, tighten those down. Starter is complete, back in. We can put the cross member brace back in here and finish up installing the drivetrain. It's easy to fill up this uh, transmission fluid from the top. All right, I kind of made a mess, but I uh, went ahead and put five quarts of uh, 10W40 in here. Um, probably will take more, a little bit more, but uh, that's all I had for right now. Um, I filled up the power steering fluid. Um, I found a nice long bolt, got it going in here. So now I set up two bolts here with this broken piece that I broke off here. Um, this may not work or not. It's only going in maybe a quarter of an inch. So, uh, but this one should hold, that one should hold. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll have to do it all the way through this uh, water pump eventually. But uh, anyway, this is back on here. We're about ready to get this started up. This truck has not been started for at least three weeks now let's put these hoses back on here and we'll put some water and uh fill, fill the radiator up uh in here with uh coolant and water and uh, we'll see if this thing fires up i don't even have the shifter in here but it's in neutral
I believe this cap goes on. Let's twist it on here like so. Yeah, there we go. I think that's it. Got the four by four shifter. It's got a big old bolt you gotta put in through here. And I think this is the way it goes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook that up from the bottom part, the linkage. Tommy Bahama, oh yeah, baby. Check this out. Right there. All right. Oh, it's a little tight. <laughs> oh, no, that's good. See if these, let's see if we can shift this back into, uh... okay, two wheel. Four wheel, four wheel low. All right, let's leave that in two wheel drive. This can shift. Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, so we're in. Yeah, we're almost ready to take this thing for a test drive. That's pretty good, about 8,000 RPMs. I turned the idle screws uh, about a quarter turn out. Let's try this out. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh. It's a little tight. Some of the uh, the bolts are a little bit loose on the exhaust manifold. Uh, really got to jam this into fourth gear. There we go. It does shift pretty well though. The clutch is working. The brakes are working. I haven't even expected the brakes yet, but they're working pretty well. I think we're idling a little bit high. I still need to adjust the carb a little bit. Yeah, we're definitely idling high. Well guys, it looks like we haven't completely solved the oil leak. I think we still got it leaking around this oil pan. And, oh, and maybe the dipstick area. I might not have screwed that in all the way, but definitely around the oil pan down here, still leaking. That oil drip is not as bad as it was, but it's still dripping, so I think our fix is not gonna be permanent, so we're gonna have to look at this again. Well, guys, I think I gotta re-pull the engine and have another look at that oil pan. Uh, that'll be the next thing we do. Also, we're gonna do a lot of interior work as well, so uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.